Hi guys, a little rhino video coming right up. I'm going to cover, in order, how to make the topo, how to make complex figures, and how to manipulate objects. I'm also going to cover different ways you can do this in case you want to get technical. First off, we need the right template. For a job like this with our models, we should use the small objects inches template. This will be easier to measure things out if we need to measure it. Mm -hmm. Pro tip, whenever I'm working in Rhino, I always have O-Snap and Gumball turned on, and I very rarely use Grid Snap and Ortho. For your O-Snaps, make sure End, Point, Mid, and Intersection are checked off, as they can be really easy and will help you a lot in the long run. I also advocate for the usage of all four viewports, because working in perspective can be a little tricky by itself. Um, try to learn to switch between 2D views and 3D views by paying attention to the top, front, and right sides, um, and that'll help your 3D work go a little smoother. Let's start our model. So usually, for a flat topo like this, I usually take a box command, draw it out, and then bam. Easy. For those of you who want to use a harder topography to make, I use what's called the line extrude method. I take a polyline in 2D, and I draw out a section view of the topo that I want. This could vary any way you want it to. After you have a curve, or a line, drawn out, uh, you can go to Surface Tools, and extrude straight or command extrude CRV. After that, raise your section to the height of which your topo um, it measures across, and then go ahead and command underscore cap to close the sides. Now using Gumball, you can just rotate it 90 degrees, and there you go. You have a topography. Okay, now for the second part, making complex objects. Most of the tools I use are located under solid tools, and for reasonably easy objects, I usually stick to this, the tools located on the left here. Most of these tools are pretty easy to use. You just click, create their size, and then create their height. Again, using the four viewports. Most of these tools, like the pyramid tool I'm using, will have a uh, prompt here at the top for you to change and customize the shape. For example, number of sides equals 5, so if I type N and I press enter, and I press a new number, like 3, the number of sides will now equal 3, which means when I draw my pyramid, it'll have 3 sides as opposed to the 5 that I started with. For harder shapes, we're going to use the same strategy that we used to make the topo. From top view, we're going to take a polyline, and we're going to draw a complex shape. Using the same uh, command that we used, extrude curve, we're going to raise, we're going to raise this uh, solid, select it, and then command underscore cap to close and make it a solid. This will help you create any type of object that you want so long as you can extrude it and then edit it with Gumball. Gumball is a really easy tool to use and it's also very powerful. Uh, for starters, you can move your solids any distance with these multicolored arrows. You can click and drag them to move them, or you can click on the arrow itself, put in a number, and the solid will move that amount of inches or feet. The curves located on the solid are to rotate the solid that way. They work the same as the arrows. You can click and drag them. Or, you can enter in a number for the amount of degrees you want it to rotate. The 
multicolored squares that extend from each arrow are to resize the object. So you can click on a square and extend the solid in the direction of that square. You can also click and drag and hold shift to resize the object in a uniform fashion. Okay, now we're going to move on to some really weird stuff. Um, these are the object manipulation tools I use. Um, they're pretty weird because you can make some pretty grotesque looking forms out of these, depending on your, the objects that you've made. Uh, also, fair warning, using some of these will make your computer, may or may not make your computer think for a little and or freeze. For starters, we're going to use Boolean union and Boolean difference. Boolean union works when two objects are intersecting each other, like this. Selecting both objects and then select or using command Boolean union will make them into one entire object. Notice how I can't separate them anymore. Boolean difference is the opposite. It takes two objects, like we have here, and again, this only works if the objects are intersecting. But you can take Boolean difference, you subtract the object you want to take away from first, and then press enter, and then you take the object you're cutting with, and then you press enter. The cutting with object disappears, but all the area that was intersecting the first object is cut away. So now you have um, a uh, piece of your first object shaved off. Next are the points. Selecting F10 on your keyboard or command points on will turn on points for most poly surfaces. If they are complex, like the ones we have here, you can go to solid tools and then turn on solid control points or command underscore solid point PTON, solid point on. These will render your solid unselectable but instead will replace all of your corners with points that you can select. Using Gumball, um, you can move these points across any of the three planes, and the solid will be edited just as much. Watch again. You, the easiest way to do these are to select your points in 2D, move them, and then watch as they warp in 3D. This way you can make some pretty weird objects. You can also select multiple points at a time if you want to stretch those out as well. Again, doing this will put some um, strain on your computer, so be careful while you do it. When you're done editing your solid, you can uh, just press F11 or solid points off to turn them off and then move your object as if you had created it in the first place. Another way you can edit your objects is by using command explode on them. Explode will turn your solid into the surfaces that make them up. So you can select them surface by surface and either move them out of the way or delete them entirely, making your object hollow. After you're done exploding an object and deleting surfaces or moving them, you can select the surfaces that are still together and then command join and they will become one whole solid again. 
Another cool way to edit um, more simpler objects is to go under Solid Tools and select Shell Closed Poly Surface. I say simpler objects because this does not work all the time. You can select Shell or Command Underscore Shell to select a face on a simple object and press Enter. This will create a small opening in your object. Again, following the prompt at the top, when you use this command, um, you can decide on the thickness of the wall by pressing T, entering a measurement. It's automatically set to 1, so if you want the wall to be thinner, I usually go 0.5 or 0.2 or etc. But it's up to you. And now that the thickness is half of what it's set, press, pressing enter, we'll make the side of the wall um, that thin. This works wonderf er, wonderfully on normal boxes as well, using shell. It makes it just as hollow. Last but not least, we're going to go over the tools under the Transform tab. These tools can be very powerful and really fun to use, although most of them will take some getting used to. Some of the tools that I use are found here at the top. From Rectangular Array, Polar Array, to Twist, Bend, Taper, um, these tools can really alter um, the way you use your objects. For example, using twist, you select the bottom of your twist axis, which will be at the middle of your object. Holding shift, um, you can make it go all the way up to uh, in a straight line up your object. And then you can select a twist axis by selecting the side like so. Once you do that, you can watch your solid twist and change form just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Another way, by selecting your solid and using bend. The start of the spine will be at the bottom. Using shift the same way, we're going to place the, top, the spine at the top of the box but staying in the middle. And then we're going to bend it to the side like so. Like that. Playing with these transform tools can, again, be really powerful and really fun to use, so I recommend checking them out. Um, again, the ones I use the most are Twist, Bend, Taper, and to make multiples or different, one, or different types of arrays, I usually go for rectangular or polar, but you can also experiment with array along curve and the rest of these found in the drop-down when you right-click on Rectangular Array. That'll be it for the tutorial. A couple ending remarks are to read the command script up top if you ever misunderstand a tool, and make sure to read it when you select something so you know you grabbed a curve, but not a poly surface. Remember to also pay attention to your viewports for added accuracy and clarity. The biggest tip is to have fun and experiment with different tools. Experimentation is the fastest way to learn, and it can be a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, guys. Good luck.